My name is Fade Maraki and I'm at SkinFX in Brighton and Hove. Today I'll be speaking with Dr. Pangolin in Tahiti. Dr. Pangolin and I were scheduled to meet in March 2020. I was sailing from Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island, to Tahiti. It's a 4,000 kilometre sail. I was with X Expedition with a crew of 14 women and we were collecting microplastic samples for marine science. I was a volunteer. I'd been interviewed out of more than 20,000 applicants for 300 places. It was an all-female NGO focused on marine science and microplastics. We were trying to get legislation changed amongst other things to protect our environment. Whilst we were at sea, we got the news of coronavirus pandemic and we were mid-South Pacific. So we had no contact with the outside world until then. <laughs> so a lot changed for us on that trip. And my guest spot in Tahiti was postponed as was my interview with Dr. Pangolin. So you can imagine how excited I am today to speak with Dr. Pangolin about tattoo history in Tahiti. Welcome, welcome Dr. Pangolin. And thank you for speaking to me today. Um, yeah, so we were supposed to meet in March 2020 when I sailed all the way to Tahiti. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Changed, uh, things changed a lot. <laughs> a lot changed on that trip, that's for sure. What led you to study anthropology and tattoo history in Tahiti? So uh, I decided to, um, to, um, to go for um, the PhD because uh, the subject was uh, still in me, I mean, tattooing. And uh, because I, well, I, I had the chance to, to do a little trip on Tahiti, I, just, I was like, well, of course, this, this has to be my PhD. People there uh, are still living um, um, in this, uh, uh, no, people, people in Tahiti are living a modern way of tattooing, which is completely different uh, of what I've seen in uh, Europe, in a way, in a way, uh, in others, uh, very similar, but uh, there's something uh, re really more deep. And this is the, the identity part. And the identity part is not just um, your, uh, your, your, um, here they, they don't talk about only your local, immediate, personal identity. They talk about an identity which is coming from uh, ancestors, which is coming from history, uh, which they are reappropriating too. Uh, by that means, uh, by that that means, uh, it's not exactly the same way they're tattooing now that they're tattooing uh, two hundred years ago, or before. Um, but that was really uh, what, what touches me, and uh, and then I decided to come here and uh, stay here to start working on a PhD on a Tahitian tattoo. Yeah, it sounds like you've spent a long time accumulating your research and collecting the data. So yeah, I've done a similar thing. I wrote a book about tattoo anthropology, so it'd be really great to collaborate with you. I'm sure that we could chat for hours about all the different places we've been and research tattoo history. I think similar motives have drawn us both to Tahiti. We've obviously been there a lot longer though. So I would love to pick your brains on some of your research and ask some questions about the tattooing there, if that's okay. So what are the earliest records and how has tattooing and culture changed in Tahiti? Well, uh, obviously that was uh, because uh, the, the tattooing culture changed uh, because of the contacts with the Occidentals. Uh, that means uh, this is, uh, uh, and when it changes for real, that was uh, by legal terms and legal terms occurs uh, with the Pomare laws. Pomare laws were, were the laws edicted by the uh, local and the French government uh, jointly uh, in uh, 1821, 1821, 1824. The, this is the, when the first Pomare laws were edicted. And then in these laws, they, they say, uh, they cannot use uh, no more um, dancing. They um, cannot uh, use. Uh, uh, they, it's preferable to uh, use um, uh, mission ro mission robes. The, I mean, clothes. Yeah, occidental clothes. 
clothing. Uh, the, the language, the Asian language, uh, where um, it starts to be um, uh, ostracized. Mm. And uh, obviously, they, um, they um, prohibited uh, tattooing, different tattooing forms, as long as uh, the ancient icons, I mean, I mean tikis for that. And they start um, in Morea, they start burning the tikis, they start uh, turning their backs to ancient uh, beliefs, and uh, uh, start to uh, work hand by hand with the local missionaries. This is where uh, all started, the, by the beginning of the 19th century. Okay. Right. Yeah. And uh, since then, uh, that, that was. Um, there was almost, almost, um, th there was not almost, there was a, a real violent stoppage to ancient, um, uh, to ancient cultures and uh, the way they practice it, the way they uh, imagine, uh, the, the, way you the way you dress yourself, the way you dance, the way you talk, the way you mark yourself has to be, uh, has to disappear just as soon as possible. The, the way it was done and um, the quickness uh, the, the way it was done, uh, just um, shook the people, uh, which some, some of them, the Mama'i, tried to um, uh, preserve uh, their ways. Uh, and so they had to um, uh, go uh, to the valleys or to the mountains uh, inside Tahiti, I'm, I'm talking about Tahiti, uh, to, to continue living their, their own life. Uh, but they were persecuted. Uh, fight it, uh, and at the end they just uh, disappear or uh, them too. But in, in in the space of 40, 50 years after uh, eighteen uh, the 1820s, there was a really trauma, a real trauma, a real social trauma, a real global social trauma, uh, which affects a lot identity of the people, of course, because um, this is uh, this new religion, this new culture. Just coming here and say, okay, now you're French, you're talking French, and uh, uh, yes, you are Tahitian. Oh, Tahitian is fun. Uh, Tahitian is fun because um, you got flowers, uh, you got a uh, fancy food, you got a nice territory. We can come here and uh, do uh, our paradise as we see that on the, our books, our Christian books. This is paradise here. So uh, we're going to live uh, our paradise as we see it, but not as you uh, used to live it. Um, that so that was <laughs> obviously pretty violent, socially violent. And uh, that, that leads to uh, the, the, um, the 60s and 70s, because in the 60s, 70s, um, uh, you have that um, generation of really local Tahitians uh, of, um, with um, the possibility to going to study to France, right? So they go to study to France and then they learn the history, really. They, they, because they, they're not going to study, they, they was not the first classes. They go to university then, there, and they, they really study the history, where they come from, and they, they took conscience of um, uh, what is their identity? What is their own culture? Levis just said uh, in, fr in French, he said, um, uh, Il fallait se distinguer de la bête. Celui qui ne, qui se, qui ne se distinguait pas de la bête uh, n'était pas un homme. So, so people have to do that distinction between him and the social group on this side, because um, if he is different from this social group on the side, He's not. He's no more an animal. He's really a man, right? So uh, this is all those differences, um, uh, closing uh, the way you cut your hair, the way you treat your skin. Uh, this is all that which makes you a human and not an animal, and uh, which has to be different from the uh, side society, from the others just here or just here, right? Yeah, every tribe is different and it's a big part of cultural identity and 
globally we've seen that shift um like in borneo and rapa nui and mentawai the places i've been and studied myself i've seen a similar thing where the the old ways and traditions and all the things you know that have passed down cultural significance and stories from the grandfathers and things like that have just stopped and it's really quite shocking like in, you, know, you see people with half tattoos that they just finished it wasn't even completed they just stopped the tattoo it's great to see the revival i think we see perhaps more tattooing from tahiti globally than other places it's so famous for this which is really wonderful still i think we we can't say um uh the, the culture has been revived um uh on the same way it was living uh, three, 200 years ago oh. the, uh, the the way um tattooing culture revived here was more uh, something like um uh it's when you say reviving it's it's just a, a regrowth uh, <laughs> a recreation of meaning a recreation of um iconography too because um, um Tahitian tattoo almost uh, we almost uh, don't have um, any um, uh, iconographic um, uh, the, the planche I'm sorry I, I got uh, problems with my English the uh, uh, in planche we don't have drawings of traditional Tahitian tattooing there's there's only there's only existing maybe um, uh, four or six sheets with a little uh, motifs in in this like flash you know yeah. we just have maybe a uh, four or six flashes of um, traditional Tahitian tattoo uh, existing repertory uh, keep it keep it it's a, there's there's no such thing as a Tahitian iconography of tattooing hmm. there is not there yeah. is not there's just a um, just a few um, patterns that, and not patterns, just uh, uh, little motifs, li re pretty little. And uh, there's, 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 there's not uh, a Tahitian tradition of tattooing kept from that period. There's not. Um, Tahitian tattoo re-exists, uh, reborn uh, in, the, uh, the, in the 80s mostly and the 90s really uh, because of the um, the work done by um, Karl von den Steinen or Willow Dean Handy on the Marxism iconography of tattooing and uh, the other parts of culture uh, but um, uh, with that work done by uh, that German uh, researcher um, uh, by the end of the by the end of the 19th century, because he, he was there at uh, 1898. In 1898, he was on Marquesan Islands for six months, only six months. But on, in six in six months, he did um, a crazy job, uh, a really deep scientist job, uh, talking with the ancients in different valleys, donkey um, uh, collecting. Uh, collecting the language, collecting um, uh, all the plastic work they can do all around their culture, and collecting all the knowledge he could about tattooing, about iconography, and um, working with the tattooists uh, to, to have um, um, uh, accurate um, definitions of accurate iconography. And uh, with that work done by uh, Karl von den Steinen by the end of the 19th century, this is with that work, with that work, uh, that the Tahitians um, reconstruct their own tattooing, their own meaning, and their own iconography. The, the, the Tahitian tattooing is a complete um, reconstruction of what tattooing is with the basis of the Marcuson uh, culture of tattooing. Is there more tattoo history in the Marcus Islands? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, th there is in Marcuson Islands because um, uh, they, um, uh, the laws emitted by the Pomoré uh, laws, 
prohibiting tattooing, dancing, and everything. It was for all French Polynesia, right? Which Marquesas Islands were all already part of, of course. But um, there was a faraway island. So the time the laws go there and uh, and start to work with the people and the head of the people and the and the local um, uh, police uh, starts to uh, acting uh, for with the with the with the people um, took more time. So this is why uh, by the end of uh, the 19th century there were still little. Um, the little people, the few people, fewer people, people of course, but still people practicing tattooing in Marquesas and Islands. They still have uh, the knowledge, they still have um, the patterns, uh, but they were the last uh, tattooists, Tuhuna, uh, living there, who could speak with um, uh, Karl von den Steinen and uh, and give give him this knowledge he could um, keep on those books uh, to uh, the next generation which is crazy because you see it's um it's the work of uh, an occidental who uh, helps uh, the locals to keep their own culture alive that this is it is this is really um, a bad movie <laughs> okay <laughs> right oh fair enough well, it's good that the documents exist and that some history has been preserved. This sounds like such important work for people to learn about their culture and, and redevelop tattoo styles from it, even if it's not 100% original. It sounds like a lot of information has been developed from there. Uh, the, the work he did uh, was uh, really amazing, but uh, he, he really worked with the, the end of that culture. This is what we have to understand. This That, that was the, really the end the end of the, that kind of culture, because the tat tattooing was already changing um, visually. Um, there were no more uh, by the end of the 19th century, even in Marquesas, people uh, who is going to be completely fully tattooed, I mean, a young man going completely fully tattooed, only the elders uh, were, only, uh, were still wearing the, the full Marquesan bodysuits which they um, which they get all day life long you know uh, talking about uh, the, this these body suits talking about their own history uh, what they fight why they're working uh, who's their wife how many children you know this is uh, everything you have uh, on this body and um, uh, as we're talking about um, um, the tattooing uh, this is the same way for the language for markers and language, uh, so, so some words are uh, were changing, and um, and the patterns after uh, just talking about tattooing again, but patterns were changing too. They're trying to adapt because uh, because of the um, of the ostracization of the ancient um, uh, beliefs. Uh, they had to change the patterns of the their um, their tattooing, so. Uh, a tiki's head, a tiki eye, or, or, or something like that, just starts to disappear, and they and you start by the end of the 19th century to see uh, their name marked uh, in uh, occidental um, capital letters. You know, the guy's name is Kohu. He's going to have Kohu here. You know, and uh, that was um, th that was the situation by the end of the. Um, uh, of the uh, of the 19th century in, Mar in even in Marquesas and Islands, don't talk about tattooing uh, because at this, at this period there was no more no more uh, tattooing here in Tahiti. Right, there's so much so, there. It's more preserved in the Marquesas Islands. Yeah, it was more. It, it was more. The knowledge was pre was preserved because they don't tattoo no more traditionally. This is it. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, and and that work of um, um, making tattooing living again just really starts um, almost uh, one century later by the seven by the the eighties or uh, and the nineties. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, could I ask you a couple of uh, questions about the tools and everything for people back home that might not have seen this? 
fascinating technique. Yeah. Please tell us what type of manual method they use and what type of sticks and needles and all. So um, how different this is in Marcus Island. For what we have here in Tahiti, we have uh, some um, uh, um, uh, on the museum. We still have some uh, tattooing tools, which are made uh, of, um, um, which technically are like uh, Samoan, uh, is like the Samoan approach. That means um, uh, a hammer, that, that means uh, just a, a stick, which uh, you use as a hammer, and then uh, a comb, uh, something we, we like to, um, to, call, to call a comb, which is um, another stick with um, a comb then uh, on the on the stick all right and that comb uh, can be done here in Tahiti uh, as they done it uh, in Samoa I mean with the big teeth but um, they use um, the we saw that we saw some uh, with um, uh, uh, fish uh, bones too and um, to uh, to fix the fish bones uh, they they sometimes use um, turtle scales. You mean that stick, then a turtle scale and fish comb and fish combs uh, on the um, on the comb, right? And then after they use um, uh, noix bancoule. Oh, you know bancoule? Bancoule is a is a little nut. Uh, you you find on some trees here, which is the bancoulier. Uh, these nuts are very um, oily. Full of oil, and uh, that was used. That they were used uh, as um, candlers. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were used as, as candlers, as um, uh, even uh, they some say that even as a clock, because you you put uh, different um, um, lots of uh, nuts uh, on a um, on a rope, and the first um, uh, is burning, and they that give you uh, a sense of time. Okay. Anyway, oh, wow. right. But if you burn that that nut, and uh, if you um, put something on the on the top, you can have um, uh, the residues of a burning here, and then you mix it with a uh, coconut water or just water, or pee if you are in prison, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then you have your um, your ink. The ink was done with the with the bonkul nut. Okay. Uh, that way, burning the bunku nut. That okay. was the ink. The carbon from the smoke from the nut you collect and yeah, coconut or water. Yeah. That's really special. Today, uh, tattooing is not practice, practiced by uh, everyone, you know, even in these islands. They have respect for that. They know that it's, it's their history, their culture. But, but the, um, the occidental way of thinking has just done his work. Lots of people who's going to church don't want to hear about tattooing. They say, oh yeah, it's okay, it's folklore, it's, it's, entry, you know, it's interesting, but uh, no, no, I'm not gonna be tattooed. God doesn't want that. Yeah. yeah. Some people change their traditions and for them it stays in the past. Yes, and because um, tattooing um, has a bad reputation, has the occidental bad reputation. That because in the 90s, uh, in the 80s, 90s, when the people starting to uh, getting tattoos again, where does it start? It doesn't start uh, in cultural movement. It, it starts with the cultural movement. Movement, but the cultural movement is kind of um, um, they are on the marge. They are they are on the on the ledge on the ledge of the society in a way. This is not the mainstream uh, way of thinking talking about cultural revival mm. in the 70s and the 80s. So where does it start to um, be applied? It's in prison. Okay. It's in prison. It's the bad boys. It's <laughs> the guys who doesn't want to, um, to, uh, to go for the, the local laws, um, uh, the local government who doesn't believe in that, who still think they've been robbed which is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so where do you see uh, tattooing uh, restarting? It's in prison. 
and uh, they do that with what they have on their hands. That means uh, they're using uh, uh, tattoo machines made with um, electric razors, uh, uh, pimped to be uh, tattoo machines, working with uh, uh, batteries, little batteries. Uh, and they start to um, uh, do and uh, recreate that Tahitian, that new Tahitian tattoo with the basis of uh, Marxian iconography. That was Marxian iconography used to make the Tahitian tattoo. And uh, for that, they used um, the work of uh, Willodin Handy, an American came uh, in the 1920s uh, at, um, in a... Uh, Marquesan Islands, and the work of uh, von den Steinen, that um, German guy. Uh, but because the books, uh, especially the book of um, von den Steinen, was written uh, mostly in German, no one understands what was the meaning of the, the iconographies they see and everything. And uh, then sometimes you have um, uh, all that flashes with, um, in fact, uh, his uh, von den Steinen wa was just uh, putting different kind of uh, honu, kind of turtle, 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 uh, the, the uh, uh, iconography of the turtle, different iconography of the turtle, which were uh, not uh, realistic. Uh, we're just really in uh, Marxian iconography. So it's uh, one kind of turtle is A, the other kind of turtle is B, C, D. E, F, G, you see, and you have all those, fla those flashes with uh, a motif and the A, another motif, and the B, another motif, and the C. And then the guys just think it was at the alphabet. So they start to write their own name with the different uh, uh, ways of doing uh, the turtle pattern or the tiki, uh, of the tiki hand pattern and thinking this is a A, a B, a C, a D. So they're writing names like that. They, they, and, and say, oh, this is my family. And this is the motives of my family. But they were just uh, recreating. Wow. Yeah, I'd heard that the turtle tattoos are representing like a family surname or something like this. But I didn't realize that someone had used the different, you know, different turtle motifs to sort of spell them out as well. That's new information to me. Yeah. Well, it's pretty funny that the way they auto steal their their own culture to uh, recreate something new, which is uh, which was no more or less um, beautiful or without or with meaning, but it was a different meaning. You can't say it's traditional. It was made from a, 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 a traditional iconography, but it was just completely new. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's almost like a movie of the past with the contemporary sort of spin on it. So yeah, it's an expression of the, the old memory of the tattooing. I was wondering in the patterns, can you see some of the old traditional patterns from these motifs still used? Are there any that we still understand or have those been made and recreated too? The only way to understand the ancient patterns is uh, to um, to go for uh, von den Steinen work because all the um, oral knowledge completely disappears. This is not a, a thing you, you, we can't say about nothing about that because it's just um, uh, the transmission stopped. So uh, all the work you you'll find all the work about the meanings of um, this or this or this iconography is only uh, going to be found on the books made by uh, mostly uh, the uh, Karl von den Steinen. It's, uh, the, it's really, really the, um, the biggest uh, and the only uh, reference we have to uh, know how the meanings were before. And um, you have to know, and uh, Karl von den Steinen uh, write that before. What he um, took on these books, on this, his study, was um, that uh, instant, that, that was that moment meaning, right? And uh, was uh, that uh, Tuhuna meaning from this valley, okay? And um, uh, 
then another um, iconography is going to have another meaning with another tuhuna in another valley, all right? And that, that was the work he did in um, 1898. In 1870, there were probably have different meanings of um, uh, and a different kind of uh, iconography uh, in a different valley. And, uh, and every uh, tuhuna, every valley, every iconography has his own history every time you see one. This is it. And um, this is why I think um, uh, tattooing was like that before and is still like that, is um, um, you are the maker of your own um, uh, sense, of your own um, um, identity. Um, if you want uh, today your tattooing, uh, your, your tattoo, your, your, your uh, let's, say, let's say that your your Tiki's eyes, huh? your Matahoata. Uh, if you want your Matahoata to represent your mother or your way of seeing the things, this is going to be that. You can crystallize on local, on, on a local modern tattooing and, and on every tattooing, your own way of thinking, your own way of um, uh, looking at the world, looking at the past, Tattooing is just um, today the, the, the freest way of talking to yourself, of talking about yourself uh, and marking your skin and to represent it. And uh, someone's coming from um, uh, another part of the world, just going to see that tattoo and try to imagine, uh, you know, that uh, ancient meanings and uh, ancient stuff. But it's not that. It's a complete modern way of tattooing. You can find, you can find, you can search, you can uh, define yourself and your tattooing by ancient meanings if you want. But uh, it's not a law. It's one of the last uh, uh, free space we have. It's our body. So um, uh, the people can have exactly the same iconography on the skin, but that iconography will say uh, completely different things. And one is not more true than the other. They have uh, all the same legitimacy. Yeah, that's this is uh, the way the tattooing is done today. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I think symbols can mean, even if it's the same symbol, it can mean something very different to two different people. And the symbols we put on our skin when it comes from a really internal place, uh, you know, a place of identity or, or meaning from within, it's, it's really a personal thing. And it doesn't mean that it's more or less value because it's it's unique in itself, isn't it? So, however people want to express that, you know, it's the right way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Yeah. As for some people, having a rose here is their mother. For another one, is their um, is their friend's dead. For another one, is just the love. You know. For another one, is just because they they love flowers. Yeah, it can just be like a memory of a time as well, what they were doing. There's, at no one, there's no one more right than the other, right? Exactly, exactly. And I think it all has significance in ancient times and modern times. You know, it's really, it's really about the person's journey. And we've seen with tattooing, people go through this practice as a ceremony in different parts of their life. And that has a lot of significance as well. So, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Body suits are also tattooed as, as a ceremony throughout someone's life as well. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen some of the first sessions done and I've, I've heard that they're consecutive days, sometimes two weeks solid getting tattooed and things like that. But this is, um, this is the modern way too. Um, there is uh, no more uh, or um, just a, a few, few uh, maybe I think it's j just two or three tattooists working uh, with traditional um, tools mm -hmm. here in Tahiti, Tahiti and, and Morea, mm -hmm. uh, because everyone is using uh, the machines right now. But uh, in the way the people are getting their body tattooed, uh, some people are really uh, on that um, uh, on that way of um, construct, co constructing themselves by the tattoo. Uh, I um, recently, I just met, um, uh, recently, not so recently, <laughs> um, I, I got a friend here, his name is Patu, 
Patu is a tattooist, uh, the young, well-known tattooist here. This is really the, the Moana from Disney. Yeah, long hair, really strong, huge tattoos. Um, he's pretty, uh, she's, he's still pretty young. Uh, and um, he's doing a uh, huge, huge pieces now of tattooing. And the uh, people come to this kind of tattooists now uh, because uh, sometimes they're naked. I mean, uh, tattoo, <laughs> tattooingly uh, yeah, of tattoo, naked, naked of tattoo. Um, they, they're naked and they just um, uh, want to embrace what they are really, uh, what they identity tells them they are, what they are. So they want to have a huge tattoo and just just be, start to be a warrior uh, tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> so so they, they, they go for that and they do that. Um, sometimes it's part of um, uh, the show because the, they do tattooing um, conventions here. So they um, take that opportunity to make a big show, to just uh, get their full body on the week of the convention tattooed. Yeah. And uh, it makes a lot of uh, noise. Yeah. People see that and they go for uh, and they go to the TV and then they uh, exist from themselves. Yeah. Sometimes they have something to do. Uh, so they, they have something to say. Sometimes they just have something to show. That's it. This is the way uh, we're doing tattooing too. Don't forget that. This is 2021. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, we, we're in the, this um, visual society now where people uh, uh, is really happy to um, be seen, to exist like that. Before too, of course, uh, this is not just a, a modern stuff to, uh, to, to want to exist. Uh, but um, people are using uh, tattooing to, to, to exist more, too. It, it's a tool. Yeah. It's a tool. It's a tool to, to be more confident with yourself. It's a tool to be more confident with your origins. It's a tool to be more confident with um, uh, the message you want to give to the people. Yeah. It's a great way to express. It really is. And visually, it's a great way to represent yourself and your culture. Like the um, traditional tattoo artists from Tahiti I've been fortunate to meet in the Netherlands, in Borneo, and they get a lot of attention at tattoo conventions. You know, the, work, the work's so unique and the tattoos are so impressive. Um, when we were in Borneo, the power cut at the convention because of the monsoon rains, there were some issues. And these guys were the only ones still tattooing. So all the other tattooers headed to the bar and the guys from Tahiti were busy all weekend. So, yeah, they had a great time. Well, I'd like to know what would be really important to document about t um, tattoo history and Tahiti and the Marquez and Moria, um, because I understand there's, you know, there's a lot of modern history and um, things like that, but what would be really important to preserve and to show the rest of the world? It's totally um, the way uh, they tattoo, uh, we're tattooing in Europe or in other parts of the world. They came for the same things. They have, um, they, they're ready to pay uh, with money and only money. They, uh, um, there is no more um, traditional way of tattooing. Even, uh, uh, yeah, there's no, there, there's no more way of traditional tattooing. It, this is, um, I think uh, the tattooing is, is a product. Is, is just a, a product now, a product which can be used uh, for, for many ways to talk about culture, to talk about history, to talk about yourself, to talk about your society. But it, it's a tool. Hmm. It's a tool. And people use that as a tool, as, as what it is. The people who were tattooed uh, 300 years ago uh, have something more magical um, than today, probably. That was the way the others see the, the tattooed people too. If you were not aware of how it is done, 
and why it is done, you just think it's magical in the past. But if you're part of that culture, you're just a man like the other one on your side. And uh, today, uh, I think the, the, the magical part of the tattoo uh, has disappeared in a, in a way. The people just look that as, uh, uh, as something, um, yes, that, uh, a product. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's not changing. It's just uh, confirming uh, the, the way it is now. Yeah. And uh, if you want to um, uh, see what people do with tattoo, then um, you're going to see uh, what you see in other countries too. I, I'm not, I, 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 sorry, I don't want to be rude or, or to just to be uh, too hard, uh, but um, you're not going to find something uh, magical, you're not going to find something different. But yeah, I think that in Tahiti, it would be great to look at the contemporary expression of uh, the ancient arts and crafts. Obviously, um, art and craft has always been current to where it's at. You know, in the past, it's it's a very mystical ancient thing, whereas now it's it's more commercial. It's sold in a shop, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it still really holds all of the values and things like that, I think is really important. So. Um, I think with our series, we're going to be looking with uh, tribes that are 100% traditional still, like in Mentawai, you know, it's very traditional there. So I think it would be really nice to look at, you know, both sides, you know, how things change and people still expressing, still celebrating this art form. <laughs> yes, of course. But um, this is it now. Uh, the, the way tattooing is uh, just practiced here in Tahiti is just uh, the modern way. Uh, you almost don't have, um, uh, you still have the, those tattooists who can go home uh, to your home and tattoo uh, yourself at, at your home. But um, I, I'll, I'll say the um, one of the last guys who's tattooing with them, um, um, be careful with what uh, I'm going to say. Um, it's um, Purotu. In Morea, you have a guy, his name is Purotu, which is part of the um, uh, first um, uh, creators of the new, um, of the new Tahitian tattooing of the, of the, um, uh, of the nineties, of the, the end of the eighties, uh, beginning of the nineties. Uh, there were three, there were Shime, Purotu and Ronui. Shime is living in France, working in France. Uh, Ronui uh, lived in uh, and still lived in Canada. Ronui and Purotu just stayed in Morea. There were those three guys uh, who um, uh, start to uh, recreate the, um, the, the, this new um, uh, Tahitian style. You know, uh, the, the new Tahitian style born in the 90s, where that um, when you see you, you see that kind of uh, turtle, you, you see a turtle from the up, you, okay, with the head, the body, the limbs, the little limbs like that. But inside the turtle, there is one cheeky head on the side, two dolphins uh, to make the, uh, the fins, mm -hmm. uh, and, a different, um, and all that turtle is made from different uh, iconographies, uh, um, Marquisan iconographies, all in small little pieces, uh, reduce it to little pieces and just to make all the shell of the turtle, you know? This is what they invented. This is the, this is what we say, uh, uh, when you see that, you say, oh, this is a Tahitian tattoo, right? Yeah. yeah, but this is that invention of the 90s. And these three guys just invented that, that kind of style with um, an outer line and inside a lot of um, uh, markers and iconography, making a big turtle or making a dolphin or making something. That iconography, that kind of tattooing doesn't exist before that. Yeah. It never existed here before that. They invented that yeah. in the 90s. So these guys are interesting uh, for that because they, they created that. Yeah. And, and without knowing how the, what the, all these little patterns uh, were saying, they, will, they, will know, they, they didn't know that. And they say that 
and they say we didn't know that we're just doing because we have that iconography we want to tattoo we have to our culture of tattooing but we didn't know how to do how to do that so we they have to invent it invented that uh, and so and um that, that way of tattooing has uh, evolved by the years that today uh, it's more um, huge the 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 patterns ha have taken uh, have retaken uh, a uh, a bigger a bigger place on the body there's no there's no more little stuff on on a big figurative model the, now now um, people here are doing uh, the big stuff the bigger uh, the uh, in the past this all, all this uh, all these cross here all the, all this cross here is going to be like that oh. 10 years ago or 20 years ago it's going to be like that you know and you're gonna see um, 20 of these just to make a, an arm. Now we just do two, and uh, it's done. Yeah. It's, um, and then we come back to uh, how visually it was uh, maybe two two hundred years ago. Yeah. It's uh, probably uh, close, closer to that. Closer to that. But uh, this is because uh, mentalities, uh, um, contemporary mentalities about tattooing uh, evolved too. There is not. Uh, there is no more just only um, uh, prostitute, bad boys um, stuff. Tattoo is no more that only, right? Yeah. Uh, less ritual as well. You know, more tradition was with you know it being a family thing and and an event like a ritual. Whereas now you can just buy it from the shop. So I think it's probably quicker and easier to fill your arms up and everything than before before maybe it was more of a tradition and took more time is that right um i think um the only way people uh, uh the, the only way people have a feeling of what is really tattooing is by the pain hmm. the, the only thing uh, who's making tattooing real still real is is the pain and people start using painkillers yeah yeah <laughs> you know? so so <laughs> yeah. this is um, this is moving too yeah everything modern now <laughs> but, um, but um the traditional way uh, you, you, you're talking about uh, making something um, a familiar tattoo that's it T talking about f familiar tattoos some uh, um you, you know, because um Locals have um, um, uh, animal totems in the families. Some families have the dog. Some families have the parahata, which is the shark. Some um, other families have them. Um, they taught like totems in um, in America. Mm -hmm. it's their um, uh, protective animal, really. Yeah. Uh, but um, and, and and some people are, who know their family history uh, tend to um, to have that kind of patterns uh, on them uh, just to remember that you know. But it's uh, most part of the time it's um, it's still something little because it was little in the past two hundred years ago. It was little too. A totem uh, um, uh, that that kind of animals were uh, uh, always represent, represented a little, it's a little stuff, even in uh, Marcusian or Taishan uh, um, iconography. When, uh, when something is, um, when an animal is represented um, eco uh, graphically, it's always figurative. It's not uh, symbolic, it's really figurative. It's a little uh, ray, a little dog, a little shark, but it was like that um, for what we have, for what we, um, of the work of uh, von den Steinen, it's always little figurative stuff for these animals, which is for the family. The other iconography is uh, used and composed with different um, parts, elements of the tiki for the Marcusian uh, iconography. And uh, these different parts uh, just take place in huge, uh, parts of the body, but it is not figurative. 
you know, that big uh, ray on the back like that, you know, that there is not such thing in Marcus and traditional tattooing. They, they, they have, can have a ray. We, we have examples of a ray, you know, a stingray uh, tattooed. It's just the, the only motive I've seen. It's a little stingray here in the point of the nose, in the tip of the nose. Just a little stingray. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a drawing of um, of a guy who got that before uh, uh, by the end of the 19th century. It's, it's that kind of thing. And when the, when it's a dog, it's really uh, like a, a stick figure dog, you know, four legs, the the tail, the head, <laughs> two little ears. But it, and but it's like that on the um, here on the on the leg. Was a, that was the, the traditional familial way. Uh, no, the, the tattoo was um, your own history. Your own history. So uh, if you have uh, 10 children, you're going to have um, 10, etu, 10 uh, ena, enana. I don't have enanas here. <laughs> uh, you, you have 10 enanas uh, just uh, uh, taking their hands, uh, just uh, on the side of them, and just uh, taking, uh, making uh, around a, a circle here or or in another part of the body where the the tattoo artist the, the tuhuna uh, just choose to uh, to mark you i think i would like to come and record more information sometime so as yeah soon as you want again I'll, I'll come over and it would be great to do some interviews and meet tattooists in tahiti to look at all the design types and styles yeah i really appreciate your time and sharing your knowledge um yeah it'd just be great to come to tahiti and hang out and be able to chat tattoo history yeah, yeah. i look forward to speaking to you again soon as well have a great day okay have a great day too <laughs>